Tommy Curran, how are we doing this week? Hi, Adam. Hi, Tom. <laughs> Patriots aren't doing so good. Let's get into it. No, they're not. I, I thought you were going to say hi to, to Mego and Arcand as well. I was uh, I was giving you hi, a window Tommy. to say hi to everybody. It's understood. It's it, it's understood. It was a little rude, I no, thought. Why don't with, you guys, why don't you guys just Arcand talk over there? Uh, so when it comes to uh, the Patriots, Tom, since you don't want to say hi to Arcand, I wouldn't want to either. Uh, when it comes to the Patriots this weekend, uh, I know Mac is starting. Uh, we were reading, and we have been reading all day, the story in the Boston Herald. It, it sounds to me, and we talked to Dan Orlovsky yesterday. We've heard others say this as well. Phil said it. Mike Giardi said it. You know, people are starting to lose their faith in Mac Jones. Do you agree with that? And is that front office people? Is that the coaching staff? Or is that players in the locker room? Yeah, I agree with people losing their faith. I think that he had a lot to prove this season, people I talked to. Said it privately, said it openly. He's got a lot to prove in terms of being a leader, but people believed in him strongly as being able to be rectified by the presence of Bill O'Brien. As long as Bill was able to gloss over, move past what happened last year, and it seemed as if they did make an effort to do that with Jones, I think, especially being more open about that. But I think he had a lot to prove, and I think that he has not proven that. So I would imagine it permeates everyone. From what I've experienced over the years, this is really important to remember. Everything that we think the players, the coaches, ownership thinks the same things. There are no novel thoughts that go on inside the building. As as, as curious as we are about Matt Patricia and Joe Judge, as strange as Jacoby Myers being moved on from, as split as people could be about Tom Brady, there's myriad opinions in the building too. Just because they sit in front of computers all day and look at football plays and know what over and under fronts are and get to go to work in their sweatpants, that doesn't mean that they don't have the same inherent observations we do. So you bring up people sitting in front of computers, which brings me to this question about this story from Andrew Callahan and Doug Kide where they said – The front office that evaluates players do so almost entirely without the assistance of analytics, including GPS tracking data that's publicly available like next-gen stats. Is that your understanding of how the front office evaluates talent? And if so, why do they do it that way? It's not my understanding of it, but I'm not saying that Doug and Andrew got it wrong. Someone would have told them that, but I do know that, you know, whether or not they're using next-gen or PFF, which I think that Bill has turned his nose up to previously, they do use measurements and analytics. They have been at the vanguard of some of the measuring stats and, you know, health, nutrition. I don't know. I mean, I I think that Bill does it differently, and he does it by pencil, as he's explained in the past. When someone gets hired, they have to write down by hand, as they are indoctrinated into the Patriot system, charting plays, charting formations, and everything else. I, I don't know anything about that. I mean, I can't say it sounds pretty damning, but that kind of would fly in the face of what we've come to know about the Patriots in terms of trying to be as detail-oriented as they can. I mean, I can't imagine they're sitting there and saying, yeah, Devontae Parker gets open a ton, while everybody in the league knows that he's last in the league in separation for three years running. I think that they would know his limitations. They just kind of boldly go where they think they can go anyway. So I don't want to get too caught up in the nitty gritty of whether or not their their reporting is correct. I trust them as reporters and professionals that that what they know and reported was correct. But, I can't sit here and say, gee, I don't think that's the case, or, yeah, I definitely know that's the case, because it is newsworthy. Uh, Yeah, definitely newsworthy. Uh, Tom, Bill Belichick said after the game, we're going to start over. Uh, We're going to start fresh and and start over. When he was pressed on it, he once again said we're going to start over. What's that going to look like on Sunday? I have no idea. Zero. I I mean, starting over to me means, are you going to go three yards in a cloud of dust? Will Mac Jones, instead of exacerbating – um, moments where there's jailbreak pressure, just lay down in the field like a fawn <laughs> so that he doesn't get sacked and make a mistake. I, I mean, that's to me is that's an improvement. What he it would be an improvement because 
they're not going to wave a magic wand and suddenly Vidarian Lowe's going to turn into Anthony Munoz. And if Trent Brown can turn it on and play like Pro Bowl for Trent Brown this week, it begs the question why you gave him a raise and he played bad. So I don't think as much as we want to talk about Mac Jones's problems and the fact that he does throw gas on the fire and panic under pressure, nothing in that story to me was groundbreaking in things that we all haven't observed previously. We've seen this. Why the problems there? It's not, I don't think for lack of effort. It's not for lack of um, maybe want to or time spent. I was talking to Mike Florio today, and he said, oh, you know, people talk about playing chess and playing checkers. You're only good if you're playing chess if you have a bunch of kings and queens. If you have a bunch of pawns, you're not going to be able to play any kind of chess that's going to be dominant. The Patriots have a locker room full of pawns, and we knew that. And we look at their draft positions, especially on offense, and we can realize that the rest of the league passed on multiples of these players time and time and time again. And the Patriots are going to trot the same guys out there. So I guess, Christian, you can say, hey, let's start over again and let's not try and fall behind by 20 points. Awesome. You do that in 10 of your last 11 games. How are you going to stop that? I'm, so when I say I don't know, I'm curious to know because I thought it might be a good team this year. Tommy Curran, NBC Sports Boston. You can check out his work there, early edition, BST, things of that nature. Uh, and, of course, every week here on Jones and Mega with Arkan on WEEI. Uh Tom, you said something interesting the other night about Bill and his snippiness in these press conferences. Uh, you sense he's getting, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but you sense he's, he's feeling the pressure. You sense he's getting, getting antsy about, I don't know, like big picture job security, things like this, and you were able to glean that from some of his answers? No, I think that he feels as if he's under siege. I don't know if he is worried about his job. about what he's about to be fired, but I do feel that it's, he feels as if, when he's in the in front of the media that he's under siege and every question that's posed is taken as a challenge or a threat to try and put him in a light that's poor, which would happen based upon the performance of the team. But instead of trying to have any kind of an open discourse on it, and I'm not asking him to change his stripes in any way, but I have heard him speak with candor and be informative and enlightening on things. I'm wondering. And talk about what oh, sorry, starting over might there. mean. That's all right. No, I'm not. Talk about what starting over means. Speak at some length about how things got where they got and how you would start over. Um, to me, I think he seems as if he's under siege and the people don't have a right to question him. And I do think back to the note that he wrote to Donald Trump that Trump read aloud just prior to the election where he said, you know, you ran a glorious campaign despite a very negative media who attacks you every step of the way. And I wouldn't be surprised if Bill doesn't kind of feel the same way, that he doesn't deserve it, that he's earned a level of respect prior, that, that trumps any questioning. And to get it now, he feels, I'm not answering these questions. I don't deserve this. I'm, not, I'm not bending the knee. Even, ahead, even the even the Donald has turned on him uh, as as I saw uh, earlier this week. That even true. even he has turned on him. That was funny. Sorry, Mego. <laughs> no, no, I'm sorry. I thought that you were done, but that was. I'm glad that you put that in there. Um, wondering. Ted Johnson had. A, I don't know if I would call it a report, but he basically had the opinion that. Bill isn't doing enough to motivate the locker room emotionally right now. Things like burying the ball and I guess talking about the great race horses of the past and these motivational tactics. Do you get the sense that there's a disconnect between the locker room and the message that Bill is trying to send? That is Bill making the effort to have an emotional motivation there? Again, I swear to God, I have no idea. It's like the fourth time I've had to say that. I don't know. I don't know. He doesn't tell us anything. I think that the inherent problem isn't ball burying, isn't showing Hagler Hearns, isn't showing a horse race and stopping it and saying which horse is going to win, showing them Shackleton and his great Arctic adventure, any of that stuff. It doesn't work. The players aren't good enough. And I just think that reaching them with some kind of symbolism is whether he's done it or hasn't done it or the players are begging for it, I, I just don't think that it's going to work 
in the way that it's going to work if you change how you play. But you have a stationary quarterback behind a porous offensive line with receivers that don't separate and one that's prone to making the same mistakes week in and week out to land itself in 14-point holes. So I don't care what kind of motivational tactic you use. If your players aren't good enough, it's just going to end up the same way. And maybe that, you know, is dawning a little bit on Marblehead for Bill. Tom, if things do continue this way and don't get any better, could you see the Patriots being sellers before the trade deadline? Definitely. Definitely. And it would be interesting to know what ownership's opinion would be on that. Because if you remember when Bill Parcells was leaving, a big concern for the Crafts and why they didn't want to keep on with Parcells was they didn't trust him to make decisions that would help the team down the road if he left. They didn't want Parcells to mortgage their future. So if, and this would be certainly, and I'm just kind of thinking out loud here, if, for instance, they want to move on from Kendrick Bourne, who wants to move Kendrick Bourne to another team and get a draft pick in return, but somebody in ownership says, I like Kendrick Bourne. I think he's a good player. I think he brings something to the table here. I don't know if Bill's going to be here next year, but I think I might want Kendrick Bourne here. Does there become any kind of a trade deadline tug of war? That's a really interesting question to consider, Christian, that I I hadn't yet. I had thought about the trade deadline, but I hadn't thought about, what if Bill decides he's going to try and trade back? I was like, no, you're not. No, this is crazy. This is how we were talking about High and Bloom uh, in Red Sox yeah. season last year. Like that's the that's uh, now the point where the uh, the Patriots are at. That's very interesting, though, right? Would he be allowed to? Would ownership uh, sign off on it? Well, uh, Tommy Curran, excellent stuff as always. He joins us every week at this time, three thirty on Thursdays. Check out all his work on NBC Sports Boston. You can listen to him on Sunday morning here on WEEI with Gresh and Arcand and everybody else. Tom, have a great weekend. We'll talk to you next week. Sorry for all the I don't know. <laughs> no, it's okay. I uh, you we know appreciate the honesty. Yeah, I just talk out my ass. That's that's what I do. When I when I don't know, I just talk out my backside, as you uh, you know well. <laughs> all right, see you guys. All right.